Yes. So the phrase I'm focusing on is verse, in verse 17. And my phrase for it is, receive him as you receive me. Receive him as you would receive me. And the letter, Paul's letter to Philemon is very important today. When we think of love in deed, love in action. When we think of even today's society where there is turmoil, various type of social turmoil, um, this phrase is important. Receive him as you receive me. Philemon was a slave master. Today they tell us that there's still slavery going on, human trafficking. And yesterday, we celebrated emancipation, freedom from slavery. But in the Bible, the concept of slavery is there. And unfortunately, it seems it wasn't a practice that was condemned. It was a practice, however, that God spoke to these masters how to treat their slaves. The practice of slavery in the Bible, too, is different from when our foreparents were enslaved. Cruelty was there, yes, but it wasn't as it relates to color of the skin or as it relates to your, your, your ethnic group. In those olden days, you will always have nations enslaving other nations as part of their conquest to control the world. You will have individuals sometimes giving up their liberty because they could not pay their debt, their whole money. And one way to pay off their debt in this time was to give themselves over to the person who they owe money and said, I will be your slave until I finish pay you off. So there are different methods that were used to enslave persons, which was different from um, when the whites went into Africa and just grab us and take us here. However, too, we must recognize in, as we celebrate emancipation that some actions are very evil, but in the end, they work out for good. Joseph said that. Joseph said to his brothers, you meant evil, but God meant it for good. And how I view slavery, my own point of view in slavery, is that God allowed many of us to come into Jamaica, into the West Indies, into the Western world, so that we will hear the gospel clearly. And so I don't regret that I wasn't born in Africa. I wanted to go back to Africa, you know. I'm a part of the Back to Africa movement. But I want to go back to preach Jesus! That's what I want to go back for. And so, Philemon, can you imagine? He was a Christian. And not a bad Christian. He was a very good Christian. Listen to what, or read with me what Paul said about him in verse 5. In verse 5, he was not that type of Christian who was by name only. You know, there are some of us who, we are Christian. But the people who we live with, the places we work and go, the persons cannot see the Christianity in us. All they know, we go to church. So you have really many people who are mainly churchians rather than Christians. Philemon wasn't just a churchian man, he was a Christian. In verse 5, Paul says, We heard of your love and faith which you have towards the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. Paul was away from Philemon. And Paul heard news. 
It wasn't watched up on Instagram and Facebook, however. Travelers moving from one place to the next. When they reach Paul, Philemon living in Colossae, and they said to Paul, that man in Colossae, that Christian man Philemon, he loves Jesus. He has great faith in Jesus. He is a good example. And not only Jesus he loves, but he also loves the saints. Let me read it again. We hear of your love and your faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus and toward all saints. So this man that Paul was writing to, was a godly man. He had a good example. He was a man whom others could testify that man loved Jesus. How many of us, men and women, boys and girls, as Christians, many people can testify and say, you see him, you see she, that person loved Jesus. How many persons testify about you like that? COVID don't prevent us from showing us, right? Nobody want to raise your hand? How many, you know of many persons just boasting about your love for Jesus? When they talk about you, they talk about you as a woman who loved the Lord. As a man who loved the Lord. That's how they spoke about Philemon. He was a man of faith and it wasn't just to the Lord. Paul says, and toward all saints. Therefore, brothers and sisters, when Paul had to write to Philemon then about the slave, a former slave of Philemon named Onesimus, Paul had to say to Philemon, because although he was a lover of God and a lover of the saints, there may be, Paul did not want to know that there would be a problem. Paul did not know how Philemon may respond when Onesimus' slave returned. But Onesimus had received Jesus as his personal savior. He ran away from his servant, went to Rome, met Paul in prison because Paul was jailed because of Jesus. And Paul witnessed to Onesimus. He received Jesus as his personal savior. And now Paul was sending him back to his master. Probably in today's world would say, Paul should not do that. If the man received Jesus and the man is free, let the man go. But Paul had a concept that things must be done in order according to the Bible. Not in disorder and disarray. So Paul says, you know what, Onesimus, I'm sending you back to Philemon. And Paul sent him with a letter. And the phrase in verse 17, Paul gives a condition. Paul said to, 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 to Philemon, if you count me, if you see me as your partner, as your friend. So here Paul was looking at the relationship that he had with Philemon. And he said to Philemon, you consider me a friend? You consider me a brother in Christ? You consider me your partner? You consider me your minister? If you consider me as somebody worthwhile, I want you to do something for me. So Paul mentioned the relationship that he had with, with Philemon. Philemon probably, if he went to Philemon, Philemon would give him the best room. Would have a banquet for him who treat him the best way possible. Don't we all have people, if they are coming to our house, we take out the, the, the things that we haven't used for a long time, and we put them out nicely because we want to entertain them well? Or you guys don't do that still? Yes, man, we do that. We try to take care of our visitors very much. And can you imagine the prime minister or somebody you love, a politician you love, call you and say, I'm coming to your house? What would you do? Scrub the floor from one corner to the next. Not a speck of dirt. 
You'd look about the place and you'd provide the best meal. If you can't cook, you order it from KFC or somewhere else. Because you don't want this person to come and find any fault with your food. That is how Philemon would have treated Paul. And so Paul says to him, If you consider my relationship important, I am sending back your slave. And what I want you to do, the action I want you to take. Receive that slave. How? The same way you would have received me. So the condition, the plan that, Philemon, that Paul put before Philemon is that, now remember, you know, for Philemon, Onesimus should get punishment because he ran away from his job. He ran away, as a matter of fact, slaves were property. So if one slave is gone, it means a lost. Lost in workforce, lost in revenue, lost in a lot of things. So maybe Philemon, without the letter of Paul, could have been hostile to, to, to Onesimus. And as his property, if he comes back and he doesn't like him, he could just cut off his head. Nobody to say anything because it's his property. As a matter of fact, Paul went as far as to say, you know what, Onesimus may be useless to you, but now he is useful. He may have been unprofitable to you, but now he is profitable. And so Paul says, the action I want you to take, Philemon, is when your slave, when your runaway slave, when your bad slave, when your probably Onesimus usually grumble at that, of course, because he was dissatisfied with, with his working condition. Hello? So Onesimus must have went and strike. And when that didn't help, he says, you know what? One thing good for do this is just left this man's place. And Onesimus ran away. So Onesimus wasn't a good slave. And Paul says to Philema, this man has been converted. He's coming back to you. I don't want you to receive him as a slave. That's what verse 15, 16 says. Not now as a slave, but above a slave. A beloved brother. Especially to me, but much more to you. Both in the flesh and in the Lord. So, Paul says to Philemon, Receive Onesimus. Take action. But again, Paul established a relationship. It's a comparison. He's not only saying, Philemon, you count me, you know. And if I come to you, you will honor me. Onesimus, your slave is coming to you. But the relationship I want you to have with him is not a master-slave relationship. It is a brotherly relationship. It is a co-equal relationship. It is an honored relationship. It is a respectful relationship. Can you imagine how Philemon must have felt? Because here he has a good record. Could he spoil his good record? Or would he listen to the Apostle Paul? I assume he listened to the Apostle Paul. Because Paul... And the point we're coming to is this, brothers and sisters and friends. In our lives, we treat people differently. I don't like the silence that nobody doesn't agree with me. Can I see the answer of all those of you who treat everybody equally? Equally. Can I see the hands of those of you who you, you'd like some people to treat you even better? Yeah, all right, three of us inside here, just two. The rest of you, you are satisfied. So I'm speaking to the three and myself, make four. 
the, the, the practical outworking of this relationship is important Paul established his relationship with Philemon so he says to Philemon receive him as you would receive me receive her as you would receive me give him the same treatment you would give me give her the same treatment as you would give me so my question to us do we give others the same treatment as we give those we respect and love because unfortunately maybe they do something bad maybe they behave bad maybe yes they are bad but the point of the, the, the application here is that we should not just treat people based on their behavior based on their action but we need to treat people sometimes based on a condition how you would have treated somebody else and Paul is saying to us brothers and sisters and friends let us examine our lives we treat some people good and we receive good treatment from them and we like to say if you treat me good I treat you good but if you treat me bad I treat you bad isn't that how we operate bad for bad and good for good Paul is saying here now Philemon could have treated him well and Paul is saying treat the bad person well treat the slave well treat the person who is subordinate to you like you those of us who have responsibility and we have people who are subordinate to us Paul is saying to us in the same way you like them to treat you treat them that way some of us we are partial and in our workplace we can start from there the boss or the management team passing through we have honor and respect for them the common worker we passing through we say Cho, go on man and we degrade people in our behavior. But Paul is saying, treat people as you treat the boss. And the boss, the boss must treat the workers as he's treating an equal boss. Hello? In our workplace in Jamaica, if bosses and if Christian bosses set the example and treat their workers like they treat other management people, what kind of workplace would we have? What kind of workforce would we have? And you see, one of the surprises I got some years ago when I was doing some studies on work relationship and so on, I realized that there were some scientists who were looking at the Bible you see these things today, the, the popular talk about phrase about soft skills? You know where they got those soft skills from? In the Bible. And these people were not theologians, they were not Christians. But they went to the Bible as a social book. A social, you know, in their sociological analysis. And they see the soft skills in the Bible. And they write academic articles researcher researches about these things and they bring them in this place and internationally people talk about soft skill and unfortunately it's lost on us as christians because when people go in the workplace they don't see christians treating everybody the same way christians are discriminating christians are prejudiced christian bad mind and and thief too If you are a nice Christian, you are going to treat the business as is whose business? Your business. So those of you who go at work and punish other people, 
Can you know many people in offices and so on they punish customers? Oh, you didn't know that? Yes, man. Some of them, as you come in, they can't serve you, you know. But sometimes they don't have anything else to do, but they find other work to do. Because they say, you come, you must wait. Who are you? But as Mr. B come in, how, what, how can we help you? Hello? If that is how you behave as a Christian, you are not following the principle that Paul is saying here. Paul is saying here, treat with respect everyone. That's what he's actually saying. Treat everyone with respect. Let's think about also the home. Paul expects that in our application, that the husband will treat his wife as he respects who? Who the husband respect? God? Yeah, God? Or who the husband respect? All right, let me ask a question, you know. My wife, you, you to keep, keep on the mass. You understand? You keep on the mass. And don't talk through the mass, right? Good, that's a command. <laughs> and I was in the midst of them, so I hear the conversation. And what he was saying, the man left his wife. And why the man left his wife? He says the man went home one evening. And fish was fried, nice, set up nicely. You know the best set up of fish? With okra and everything. And there was one plate with a, with a big size fish. And another plate with medium sized fish. So when he went to a man, he feel good, he go take him fresh man and come for the the dinner table. And he went to the table where he said, the bigger dish. Because his same wife set him up. Set him up. And his wife said to him, you know, that is not your position, you know. Pastor, come in. And that is pastor's, that is pastor's food. All the story goes, the man threw away all the food and left. Threw away all the food and left. Oh, he marks the wife. That's what I was told, you know. I don't know, you know, some people put on things on story, right? I'm not putting on any, I'm just telling you what you tell me. And the person said, the man threw away and asked, her, and who prepared the food? And who give you the money? And who work for it? A pastor or me? So, oh, you can't go treat pastor over me. The point I'm using that to say is that there are many times we treat others with more respect, with more honor than we treat our whole. And let me come into the church now. So we go to workplace and the family. We could use other places. But yes, yes. My time is getting near you now. But I just talking you now. It's not five minutes since I'm up here. All right, let's continue. The church, in the church. What we find in the church too. When we say love in deed and in truth. We have to receive others as we would receive some. Because in the church, one of the things why church fellowship is not as great as it could be, is not as great as Jesus said in Matthew 11, if we have love one for another, all men will know that we are his disciples. The reason why our church are not being flocked by many people coming in because of love. Is because when they come, they do not experience the love that they thought they would experience. You know why? Because our love in the church when time is partial. We treat some people with respect and with great love. And then there are others that are ignored. So if we do that, we are not following Paul's words. And I know if all of you know that. And let me give you an illustration about this very powerful practical illustration about this. I have been in the rural areas and deal with churches in the rural areas. And many times when saints come into Kingston and come to brethren assemblies in Kingston, I remember there was one here, about three youngsters come to UWI. And I refer them from one church to the next. 
And every time after church, even sometime before they reach home, they call me and say, Sir, I'm not going back at that church. You know why? Because many times when they go, you see, in the rural areas, fellowship, many places are sweeter, you know. Because people don't miss anybody. They say you go and they read, oh, we welcome such and such. But after the reading done, that is it. Nobody sees them. And I know even now, persons who are in different places apart from where they are. And they are yearning for fellowship. Where they go, it is not there. It doesn't happen just in Jamaica. It happens abroad. The reason for it is that we are not following the words of scripture. Treat him, receive him, accept him and her. Deal with him and her as you deal with Mr. Big and Miss Big. As you deal with your friend and your family. So we find that many times in the church, our greetings is towards a group, a select group. And we leave out another group. And what I want to say to your brothers and sisters and friends, examine yourself. Do you find that you treat others? So, for example, I can use my friend as an illustration. Uncle Daniel, get holy for greetings, man. Probably more than him should get. I'm not saying you get more than you should get. You understand? But you find that there's another brother and sister who don't get none. Who don't get any. And when you treat others with respect as you receive them, you know. Um, Philemon, he was to cater for Onesimus, which we can't get into. He was not only to just receive him back. He was to give him bedding and clothing and all that is necessary so he could feel the same way Paul would have felt. In our time, there are many times that there are even people in the church bleeding, dying for help. But we don't know and we don't care. However, when you hear help for somebody else, everybody rush to it. You hear what I'm saying? Especially whoever it come from. If it come from the platform, everybody rush to it. But if somebody just whisper in your ears, this is a person need help. We ignore it. That's wrong. That's not treating others I would like to treat some. And this is what I know. In crisis, the person who have more fame get more and, that he, and she doesn't need. And the person who don't have, who have the greatest need, don't get it. And so I'm saying to us as I close, let us examine ourselves. Receive him, receive her as you receive me. Do you find that there are some persons in your congregation that you have ignored? I'm probably letting this year too, you know. Onesimus did this file, man. But Paul says, retreat him, receive him. Forgive him. Accept him as he is. If there is somebody inside here that you are vexed with, that you don't talk to, that you hardly greet, I am challenging you this morning to find the person and greet them. To talk to them. A COVID time so we can hug. But give them a help and said, I may have overlooked you. I'm saying to you something that I learned from, from, from I learned John 11, 35. I am always having to engage myself and having to ask God to help me. Do I despise others? Do I overlook others? I remember there was a time when I usually go to church, and before I go to church during the week, I usually search the name in my mind of those in the congregation. And I usually said to myself, John Brown, Mary Jane, do I greet this person? Do I talk to this person? How is my relationship? Relationship. How is my godly relationship with this person? And there were some persons, when I was a teenage, young Christian, I was intimidated to go to. Right? I feel intimidated by their presence. And I'd pray to God and say, God, you know, because, you know, some people were rough. 
Because you know you have rough Christians. Maybe you don't have them here in, in Galilee. But yeah, at other places you have rough Christians. You understand? They bark and, and you know, they, 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 they don't treat everybody the same way. And I had to pray and say, God, help me. I'm going to greet this person. I don't know how they're going to respond. But Lord, I have to, it's something I had to pray about before I reach church. And when I reach church, God would give me that enabling to reach. And if I don't reach one, at the end of church, when I go back in my prayer, I say, God, forgive me, man. I should have reached out to brother so and so. But God, you know, say, in the a little rough or when you greet him. You know, some people, you try to greet them and then just touch you and, and, and light back say, oh, thank God. Hello? You know, some people, that when you're greeting them, they're not really greeting you. But because you stretch out there and then they want to embarrass you too much, so then just, uh, you know, it's a dead. It's a lie. So you know, say, boy, gosh, it looks like me disturb that person there today. Hello? If you have a person like that who you disturb, disturb them today! Because they must live the holy word of God. We must treat others same way we treat the honorable people. We must treat every saint alike. Granted, there are some people who run into you. And because they run into you, they get more from you. And there are some people who don't run into you. But you and I have to reach those people who don't run into you. Sometimes those are the persons who are bleeding the most. Sometimes those are the persons who need a word of encouragement the most. Sometimes those are the persons who are in trouble the most. And so, brothers and sisters and friends, we have a song we want to sing. Um, can we sing it? We have time to sing that song? Yes, well, let's sing that song. You know it. Um, we are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. That oneness is what Paul spoke about here to Philemon, a boss. He said, don't receive Onesimus as a servant, as a slave. Receive Onesimus like he's a fellow boss. And I'm saying to every one of us, don't look down on anybody at all. Whether a brother and sister, a stranger, a friend or a nobody, don't look down on anyone. Whether a child, a teenager, or older folks, or so on. And don't let it be too in the church where you have division between the whole and the young. Because sometimes you have that division. And the reason for that division, older folks, you have to take responsibility. When they say the young people, they not talk to me. You have to take the responsibility. Because you know why the young people they not talk to you? Because sometimes when they come around your, 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 your face make up. And when they see your face, it looks like hurricane and thunder. So they run from your face. So you have to melt it and go down to them and say, Oh, my little brother, oh, my little sister in the Lord. Because they are intimidated by you. I was a teenager in the church. So I know I have to pray to the Lord to, 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 to approach some people, in, big people in the church. So it is on you, the holder ones, to receive the liquor ones as you receive the other holder ones. As you receive the elders, as you receive the, the, the group leaders, as you receive the persons who lead the various groups, as you receive any leader at all, receive everybody the same way. I love.